As we journey through life, we all encounter ebbs and flows, many highs and lows. We often come across stumbling blocks that leave us feeling quite disheartened or unsure about how to move back to the realm of possibility and positivity. No matter what we undergo, we all can embrace the journey, tap into the tools to push through and overcome, and find the beauty in the ashes. This is Odyssey with Yendi, Beauty in the Ashes. I sat Buchanan. Yes. I feel like I should be like, hey. No, no. <laughs> yes, you know why I feel like I should do that? Because I love that you fight for human rights. I feel like people always forget that human rights are like, the backbone of a society. It is. It is, isn't it? Why human rights? Other than the fact that it's the backbone of the society. No, other than the fact. All right, so let me really say this. We have forgotten that for some strange reason, 400 years of oppression for Caribbean people, black people. I'm talking about slavery. Yeah. And we have come into modern society but we are still ruling with the same heavy hand and forgetting yes. human dignity and so the constitution which is the document that all law is supposed to conform to it protects those who are put in power yes. and it, it creates checks and balances to ensure that the least among us is treated with human dignity yeah. respect and so there's nothing wrong with law. There's nothing wrong with judgment. There's nothing wrong with um, police enforcing the law. It is how you do it. That's right. And ensuring that the experience doesn't dehumanize, mm. you know? My and word. when we actually look at human rights and look at the constitution and the importance of it, that's where we start in terms of fixing crime and violence in in Jamaica. Yeah. But on top of that, my experience with the law That's right. and um, coming to the realization that you could, they forget that you are somebody. Um, they erase the greatness that's in you. Um, with a conviction, you are a part of the forgotten class. Mm. You become beneath the lower class mm. and there's no redemption. So I, I will say this without any apology currently in Jamaica, yeah. there is no room and acceptance of rehabilitation. There isn't. So and there I is implicit problem with bias that. for it, with it. I have a problem with that because in my opinion, um, what reason does anyone have to want to be better and do better if you are always condemned, if you are always outcast because yes. you made a mistake? Exactly. I have an issue with that because... I mean, it sounds really cliche and corny, but there must be room for forgiveness. There must be room for growth and improvement and being better, right? Must exactly. Be. I've, I've always thought that um, compassion, not, not, not just the word, compassion as an innate attribute to humans, yeah. the act of it, yeah. not, not, not saying I am superior and I have compassion, the act of it, yeah. passing somebody on the road who... It's not necessarily begging, but you can see distress from a human. And being empathetic and you, The them. empathy comes yeah. and you say, what's wrong? Yeah. You know? Yeah. If we exercise that, we would be a lot more preventative Absolutely. Than, than, than responsive. And we, especially in Jamaica, it's we react way more right. than we actually... Prevent. Correct. Exactly. Correct. Um, this interest in human rights comes out of nowhere you hinted to it a little bit a while ago she said doesn't come out of nowhere right. for you mm -hmm. um i am absolutely fascinated mm -hmm. by your story and i'm fascinated by it because i feel like so many people have a negative experience and them think i eat that because in the name of not being seen as someone that can be rehabilitated in your instance, it wasn't a rehabilitation. It was actually, you experienced a wrongful conviction. I'm going to say that, yes. Yes. 
-hmm. And why do you say it like that? Why do I say it like that? Because that's what it was. Yes. Yes. That's exactly what it was. Walk me through that. Um, so, first of all, I, I must say this. It's about 21 years now since that conviction. And so a lot of times, especially in the public space, and a lot of people have zero appreciation for it. Um, they think that it is ISAT, the, yeah, I can say it because I'm proud of it, the over 40 year old man yeah. that must have last year had a conviction. And because Jamaican society is so corrupted, some friend thing go on and you, you got the opportunity. Mm. That was not the case. Yeah. The journey was long. Yeah. I had an experience as a juvenile, and I'm, 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 I'm emphasizing that, as a teenager with, I must commend my parents, the best of guidance. Yeah. I was not lacking and wanting of anything. And I was, the word is duped. Yeah. I, I'm going to say it, and found myself going through Norman Manley International Airport with drugs. Yeah. I didn't, I, what I thought to be money right. turned out to be drugs. Someone asked you to carry some money. Yes, right. Yeah. Um, questionable as to whether or not, um, <laughs> let me not even go there, but let's just say it turned out to be drugs. Right. And the, the reality of that was a conviction. Right. Um, the, during... It's not so much of the conviction, and I, I, I want to highlight this, is that when persons are put into these experiences, it is the destiny aspect of your life. Because you're going to come, you're going to meet a lawyer. You're going to, you're going to meet the guard at the lockup. Yeah. You're going to meet a judge. You're going to meet a prosecutor who's also a, a, an attorney yeah. sometimes. And you're going to meet other persons, good and bad. But there are people in terms of, you know that human rights we talk about from all over the world that we are interconnected to That's and right. must experience to shape our, our destiny. Mm. So mm -hmm. yeah, we can talk about the conviction, but we must speak about my first experience in a courtroom. Yes, I saw uh, a black man on the bench mm. and the bench was high it was a judge mm. it was a black man like my grandfather so I'm saying black man Martin Gale please don't justice don't <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. He, and I, I never forgot it he yeah. said I'm not going I, I'm recusing myself from this case gave me bail this is a matter of record and he recused himself mm. and Fast forward, I'm having a trial and an another black man, Bert Samuels, and he's, he's, representing, he's representing me. Yeah. And I'm seeing because as my, my father is big youth. He's an entertainer. Yeah. So the only thing I want to be in this world is an entertainer, yeah, yeah, an yeah. artist. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. that's my passion. Of play course. the guitar, play the piano, mm -hmm. always. You know, you want yeah. to be. Yeah. And I saw Bert Samuels. And he's, he's an erudite lawyer, yeah. majestic, and he speaks proper yes. English, you know, and, and he's, he's Very doing eloquent. right. And yeah. I, I told him, I said, you know, I got convicted, you know, but I said, you know, I want to be like you, you know. And he gave me the look like, <laughs> you just get convicted <laughs> and you want to be like me. <laughs> go on, go sit down, you know. But that was far from my mind because yeah. after that experience as a juvenile, um, fine was paid by you know the person, the person who, who gave asked me you the, to carry money right which at that time there was no investigation no nothing they didn't do that so that right. was significant for me because I was just a child right by law and what 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 happened after that I said, man, I have to change my life and get closer to God. And I'm at, I'm at the university at the United Theological College. Really? Yes, the seminary at that. And I met the pastors and the 
the when I say pastors, meaning the Catholics, the Anglicans, yeah, the Baptists, yeah, yeah. The, the you know, experiencing religion and yeah. As I'm learning about the Bible, Old Testament, New Testament, what do you think happened? I said, but hold on, Jesus not rocking the way they were saying him used to rock. Jesus is not in the church, the building, and you, 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 you burnt offering and sacrifices. Jesus is not about that. And I just t went to the dean and said, I can't do this pastor business, you know. Mm. I'm searching for something higher. Mm. And the dean says, do philosophy. Really? Yes. And my degree was transformed from theology to philosophy after a year. Oh wow! And and th this was so. Th th this is something I, I don't. I don't think I've ever said that to anybody in the public space. Yeah. But I'm now at UWE, and I can tell you, any young person, you haven't even started to live until you get the opportunity to go into a university hmm. to find self. Hmm. Yes, I would agree. So, with that. so you yeah. see all that blame game in society about uh, for young people who go to s less than subpar high schools, and there's no nobody's trying to change the system. And I, I, I mentor young persons now, yeah. and I, I'm going to say one particular school, and yeah. I'm here's why: Haley Selassie, mm. that school. If a child is at Haley Selassie and graduates with five CXE subjects, he got no help. And when I say no help, in the form of what you can get at Campion and right. Immaculate and you, you know, the, the conventional schools. Yeah. So society is to take that child, like in America where you have um, affirmative action yeah, yeah. And, and spaces for persons like that. I guarantee you, a child who comes out with a certain amount of subject at one of those non-conventional schools They're special 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 and should be fast-tracked into law and absolutely. med and everything absolutely because that's greatness innate greatness right yes. there mm -hmm. the, the freedom that you get at a university in terms of finding yourself and finding identity especially promoting UE because if you are UEKated at UE you it's the UEKated for me <laughs> yeah <laughs> I, I'm saying that you you are not just getting a degree you're getting a, 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 a head start mm -hmm. in terms of how you interact in life, yeah. regardless of where you are. Yeah. Especially it's a melting pot for the Caribbean and you get to meet your brothers and sisters from Trinidad mm -hmm. and you get, you get to know that you don't need the United States. You can hop over to Trinidad. You can go to Barbados. Yes. Yes? yes. And they will quickly tell you, oh, Lord, man, my brother, we, can, we should go Africa, man. What are you talking? Uh, that's where I you go. You talking Trinidad? Oh, God. You just eat doubles? <laughs> All the time, you know? Slight pepper? But, yes. Yes. <laughs> hot, hot in, hot out. <laughs> <laughs> Crocodile teeth. <laughs> anyway, anyway. <laughs> so, so. I said. <laughs> Too that. funny. Anyway, yeah, but. So you got to university. Mm -hmm. So you, you've now switched to philosophy. Mm-hmm. Um, where along that path are you now like, hold on, something is going to take me back off my course? No, I don't think anything can take me off my course because now I'm doing the philosophy. My grades were amazing hmm. before um, going into philosophy. I didn't know I was bright. Yeah. And um, I'm doing well. I'm allowed to challenge the lecturers and, and say, I don't believe this. And, you know, Socrates and... Plato's cave and then <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I, I step out of you and everybody is like you don't start to live yet come back to me when you know what logic is yeah. first year you know yeah. <laughs> just call you professor yeah, immediately just call me prof professor and yeah. I, I know what my thesis is and I know you know yeah and fast forward three years later from the event when I was, I was, I was 17 and I'm in the same airport checked into a flight this time I'm in, my, I, the flight lands after being delayed. I walk into the airport and when I clear immigration and go into customs, there is a guy who I'm told, you know, he's in whatever situation and I'm to call his mother. I do that and I was told, hey, you can't do that. 
Um, fast forward, I was told that I'm responsible for the contents of his, you know, his bag. Um, I, I, how, how is that enough to connect you to someone? Um, technic so here's what the technicalities is. I knew the guy. Um, and the connecting factor was the conviction here in Jamaica. Got gotcha. um, Unlike Jamaica, which laws, I, I, I will say, are progressive, and it's not too constitutional protection. Let me say that. They have a statute in America called 404B. It's um, other crimes evidence. So unlike Jamaica, where a jury is not allowed to hear about your conviction, Previous. furthermore, yeah, a yeah. juvenile conviction, they allow it in America. Got you. Got so, you. so the indictment would have read, having been convicted for the same offense, Got pursuant you. to 404B, he's now in the same predicament again. And then they're asked, the question to the jury is, if you find that this person was convicted and is now in the same situation, you're allowed to, 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 to find guilty. Oh, wow. And so that direction would have caused that person to go home and me to... Um, to so to that person concerned. was cleared? He was cleared. He was cleared. Wow. Well, my belief, was he innocent? I think so. Okay. Um, accountability under the law, reasonable doubt not established in my in my case so i'm not here i'm not speaking about guilt or innocence i'm speaking about the law law right why am i saying that because that is what when i get home so one thing about me i always i talk to god hmm. I, I i might not jump up and jump poco and you know all that mm -hmm. stuff but i talk like i'm talking to you now mm -hmm. a part of my ritual at night i say god what's next what should i do you will guide me yeah. and when the judge gave me 120 months in the united states i'm by that math so i'm thinking okay 220 when i did the calculation that's 10 years for those who didn't know and i said god there must be something that you want me to do so i immediately knew i had something to do that's i guess that was my philosophy mind and i i searched i was a nation of islam as a jew mm -hmm. um i was a christian i searched for religion yeah. i read the bible back and front about two times the quran the torah yeah. um I realized that religion is all the same, connecting to God, finding that there is a higher power, and finding your divinity and your destiny, all of that. But what happened in those 10 years is what was magical for me. What I'm, happened? I managed to assist persons to get their appeals overturned, and I would get cursed every now and then. Is yeah, you let out people, but you can't let out yourself. You're an idiot, fine. Um, educated a lot, over 100 Jamaicans to get their GED before returning. And so I was teaching, didn't know that being in the law library, um, teaching in the education department, doing the, the fitness and all of that. I didn't know that when I get back to Jamaica, I'm now equipped to do so many things. So you did the entire 10 years? I did minus the good conduct right so i would have done nine years yeah about yeah not that thing but nine nine years and some months out of it wow right you returned to jamaica how old are you now upon return 30 i'm going to be 30 in the december wow so i, I i'm i'm <sighs> august 21st i'm just let out they didn't have haram barracks where they deported yeah, yeah. you you just let out at Central and you're like, what now? if you have family, they pick you up. If you don't, that's it. Well, fortunately for me, even before I got into the Central Police Station, my father was there. Yeah. 
So it was like, yeah, you know, and everybody's like, big youth, big youth, big youth. So I know he's there and I'm excited. And my father received me like the prodigal son who was gone for <laughs> all these years. And he said one thing to me, be patient. Really? That's I was going it. to ask you what he thought of it all. Yeah. Yeah. He, all the time he was like, be patient and live. Mm. And this is why I'm seeing my father and he has more gray hairs that... His hair is whiter than your shirt. And I'm like, I know I did that. Because he, you know, he worried about me. Oh, I he, he, he worried about me. And he was happy that I was to return. And, you know, when I would go on the road, he would be afraid. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and then other things started happening on my return. Hmm. So I, I, I'm, I'm trying to do everything right. Yeah. You know, I, I, I got projects with the United Nations and Sister in Theatre Collectives and I'm going into inner cities and I'm teaching person, you know, kids to play the guitar and I'm Superman, I'm there to save the world. And no matter how much you do, the negativity is so much. Mm. And then that thing would come up. Okay. Somebody would say, how oh, you get job at UN and you're a big convict? And they'll tell and, you know, some people would say it's okay, but the, you're treated different after right. you disclose the, the conviction. And really and truly, in all technicality, mm -hmm. guilt and innocence aside, yeah. if you've done the time, that should be it. The, I believe I, so. I've paid the price. I, I, and all, more than that, we should encourage persons to own their conviction. Right. The, the, the crux of rehabilitation is accepting responsibility, That's right. respecting the court right. after you have exhausted your appeals, you're no longer an appellant and you are guilty, you respect that. Right. You said, well, forget about the guilt and innocent part. The court has deemed you guilty. It's time for you to rehabilitate so that you can function in That's society. Right. And actually heal. And heal. And process mm -hmm. and move forward. Uh, right. So there is a particular thing that you do know as somebody who is convicted. Yeah. You, are, you are bound to be selfless. Yeah. You are bound now. The, the conviction mm -hmm. bounds you to be the greatest version, the best yes. version of yourself. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And you, you owe it to yourself. To be the best version of and yourself. And contribute into society. Yeah. So... Mm. Speaking of becoming the best version of yourself, you decide to continue your education. Well, I decided I'm going to be an artist like my father. <laughs> I met my song and I made a music video, Dance the Night Away, and I have my shirt off and my chest big and <laughs> <laughs> premiered on ER. Anthony Miller premiered it. Yeah, and, yeah. Oh, I'm going to be the big artist. And I did my songs about 17 tracks. I have my album and my aunt, it's not my real aunt, but my aunt, Patricia Ebanks. Um, she says to me, there is a Baba. You need to go and see him. He will um, bless the CD yeah. and give you the clearance. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I took my CD to him. We sat in a circle just like this. Yes. Put the CD down and he has five stones. Uh -huh. <laughs> And I'm, my face is like yours because I'm like, I'm going to be a star. <laughs> and he drops the stones <laughs> on the CD. And the stones went pish -oo, pish -oo, pish -oo, all over the place. <laughs> he didn't have to tell me what that meant, you know. <laughs> I knew something was wrong. And he says, um, you have a brother? <laughs> and I said, yeah. He says, well, he's my girl, your Tito. <laughs> <laughs> this right here is so not Naga Tito. Work. No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I know <laughs> he says but don't worry man don't bother get vexed and kill up yourself because um, <laughs> you're going to be a lawyer because that's what's in that's he said what, that to you he said you're going to be an attorney at law you're going to be the person that does the contracts and and, and, and protect your your father's music and your brother's music he didn't know me from anywhere but I never told him who my father was no. anything like that he didn't have the opportunity to Google me yeah, and research yeah, yeah. me or any connection. And he said that. I was upset. I drove home, <laughs> left my aunt there, go straight up to her, to, to her and place. And I'm mad this. Yeah, and I go up and I knock at the door to go complain to her. And then I realized I left her at the location. <laughs> the way you vex. Yeah, and I had to drive back to her. And, and the barber said to me, 
you're going to be fine. And circumstances, I'm at my home, not even two weeks or a month later, and I'm having issues with a tenant who calls the police and say, the deportee boy is trying to break into my house. The house she's referring to is Yours. my property and she's my tenant. And the police came and they treated me like a deportee and put handcuffs on me. And I went before the court and I spoke up for myself. And the judge there said, boy, the way you can talk, man, you need to be a lawyer. And that was next thing I know I'm working in a law firm. And then my, that lawyer says to me, man, you're doing good, man. You should sign up for you and do law. And he sat by the computer wow. and he, he did the application and UA accepted me. Wow. Next thing I know, I'm at UA and I started adult students, all these little 18 year olds, 50, 18 <laughs> and 18 to 20 year olds, yeah. you know, but I'm happy to be at, at the university and I know this is my opportunity. And fast forward, first set of exam, all A's. Yes. So I said, no man, I'm bright. <laughs> <laughs> I keep, I have to be saying that, but um, the experience was amazing. Yeah. I was taught by some of the greatest minds in this country. And they're right there at the Faculty of Law, Tracy Robinson, um, Professor Codilini, Dr. Mm. Jackson, Dr. Matthews. I could call all of them, but yeah. as you speak to these people, again, black people. Yes. Brilliant people. They're so educated that nothing bothers them. You go to them and say, hi, I was convicted. They say, okay, and you're more than that. That's right. Oh, and I was word, at a place, Isaac. I was at a place where I felt human again. Yes, yes. I wasn't afraid to own my truth. That's right. And that's the aspect of the UEK, the UEification I'm mm -hmm. talking about. So I'm UEKated and I'm, I'm, I'm shown love and I even entered Mr. Law. Oh! And I won. I became oh. Mr. Law. The young boys who felt oh, like... Oh, stop this. You know, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I had to put that in because you, you are allowed to do. I, I have since um, passed it on, but have encouraged because I actually, I'm an adju <laughs> adjunct lecturer at okay. the faculty now. Nice. So I'm, a, you know, I get the opportunity to also encourage students yes. to 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 um, ensure that they enter, build self confidence. It's a part of learning about advocacy and not yeah. being afraid to speak up for those who can't speak for themselves. So yes. people think that it was just some beauty pageant and yeah. didn't belong. It had a place. This is everything that I just said is what I want to say when people ask if pageants are outdated. Yeah, pageants aren't outdated. Yeah. You know, you have to... <laughs> My answer is what I said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you've completed your law degree. Mm -hmm. You are sitting the bar. Mm -hmm. You have got that phone call. Mm -hmm. that you have passed the bar mm -hmm. and you are called to the bar yes. on what date? The 12th of the 12th, 2017, on my birthday. If that is not prophetic, I don't know what is. And it wasn't planned. It wasn't asked for. I had a complicated um, application, which was approved late. And when I went to the registry, there was no date for me to be attached to the general calling so there had there was it was a private call, calling as in by myself yep. my family and persons and it was bef it just so happened as i'm pleading with the registrar for a date a judge walks into the room to ask her about things to do with the court justice martin gale the same judge that i first saw when i was 17. Oh my. And he gosh. says, I will do it, but I'm only available on the 12th. And that's how I got that date. If that is not serendipitous, I don't know what is because it's your first introduction. So, the first time you walk into court, that was a judge, the judge who recused himself. Mm -hmm. Your birthday is the 12th of the 12th. Yes. 
you're being called to the bar on the 12th of the 12th by that judge yes. who first saw you. If that's not literally like a rebirth and like a stepping into like a new year with a new purpose, a new phase of your life. No, man. You don't see that? Mm -hmm. No, man, I, 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 I was aware of it. Tell me, you don't look at that and still your vibes are like, yo. No, all the time. It happens it's every year. Me. Every year on my birthday, I, I feel uh, the rebirth. Yes. Uh, th that it, it, that's, uh, there's no words, but I can tell you that I'm reminded oh. of, of um, the importance of second chances. Mm. And I, I'm, I must say this, I was afraid of becoming 40. When I landed in 2008, I was terrified of what that 10 years would bring. Right. The pressure to restore my life. Yes. And law was not in... The cards at the time. It, it certainly wasn't in my five-year yeah. plan. Yeah. I, and so, um, it, was a, it was redemption. It was, it was a second lease on life, which I don't take lightly which is why I'm a human rights attorney. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I must say this majority of the cases that I do, pro bono. Um, I assist persons, I assess the cases, I look for the human rights violations and I, 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 I do it. I sound like a broken record every time I go before a judge and I say, the constitution says. <laughs> and I, when I did, I did case, I do cases that maybe it would appear to be controversial. Um, sometimes they become personal. For instance, the Rasta case. Um, am I affected by it? Well, yesterday I opened the paper and the Ministry of Education is telling, they're telling educators, do not bar students because their hairstyle. I'm sitting there exams. How I do I that. feel about that? I saw that. Having gone to the court and begging the court not to allow a school to violate a child's right because she had dreadlocks here, Afro-eccentric hair. Sad. Yeah. Am I outraged? Maybe not my place to be. But that same 400 years of slavery is certainly acting that educators who are there to educate are depriving students to be the best versions of themselves yeah. barring them from sitting exams because in a pandemic we don't cut our hair and we don't comb our hair but because also, we're learning from home but also pandemic or not my biggest issue is let's just let's just call it self-acceptance that's what really Should what it is. Should we be so grateful that youngsters are so comfortable mm -hmm. with their hair doing what it does straight from their scalp that we should be like, yeah, yeah good but for you. I, I, I'm mindful. The way my mind works is the ministry should go and check if those educators own a hairdresser mm -hmm. or if their son is a barber right. or, you know, have some interest in grooming. Yeah. Because if that is your concern, you have missed the mark. Entirely. They're much bigger fish right. that we should be Thank frying. Thank you. Much so, bigger so fish. It, yeah. is, it is those things that um, the constitution, which is the done of all dons in us. So I'm right. not, I'm, nothing I'm saying is, 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 is to come across as being arrogant. No. But, no. but to say that, listen, when it comes to humanizing people, look to the constitution. Find out, because today for you, tomorrow for me. Mm. And I'm sure this pandemic would have revealed that. Absolutely. So when persons was like, oh, those people down there who can't behave themselves, give them Zozo, give them SOE. Now you have to go home at night and you can't keep your uptown parties like you want to and you can't do, you can't do the things you want to freely. And when you do do it, you're in breach of the law. Your prime minister's law. You know, and it, it, it shows up society in ways that I smile when I go to sleep at night because it shows there are two Jamaicas existing at once and the hip hypocrisy will make you look bad and you have to self-check. And that's all I'll say on that. Period. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Of all the cases that you've worked on so far, is there any that's like... It just does something different to your insides, that particular case. <laughs> All of them. 
Yeah. But um, I think for me, the w one that was urgent and I was important to react to was um, George Williams. Mm -hmm. You know, just, just discovering, um, again, we don't take mental health seriously yeah. in, in our society. Um, not because we don't want to, but I just don't think we're equipped for it. How long was he behind bars 50 for? 50 years. Oh, with no trial? No trial. Unbelievable. No trial. And, and his life, his story in and of itself, his mother tried for years, 30 of those years, to get him before the court. And she died. And she wanted to see her son. Um, and so this is a man who... When I, I go to the prison, to I, I, I used to go before COVID every Saturday um, to see clients, you know, to just make sure that persons were even understanding yeah. the law. So I, I also work with, I used to be with Jamaican for Justice and then I'm, I work closely with Stand Up, Jamaica, Stand Up for Jamaica now with Miss Carla Galato. So I would go into the prisons and at Spanish Town Prison, you would always see him sitting on the balcony. He's just there like a permanent picture, not saying anything, not doing anything. So when the Indicom report came out and Stand Up for Jamaica indicated that George Williams was somebody, and I went, saw the file, and got the, you know, was to interview him. And humble man, and I was shocked. The same man that was sitting there, that's George Williams. And I, I said to him, you know, for him it was like, here we go again, because mm -hmm. I'm not gonna have my day. And I said, the next time you see me, you will have your day in court. And I went home and did the habeas, took consultation. And I, I worked closely with John Clark, another attorney, and we wrote to the DPP um, and there, you know, there was a response and it, it was a national thing. Yes. So I, I have to say that everybody re responded. The judge, Justice Stephanie Jackson Hazley, she responded. So I, I'm, I'm not going to say that I know the law more than any other lawyer. I'm just happy that I was one who had the time to mm -hmm. make the application. Right. The, 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 the DPP, she ensured that she, she exercised her powers under the Constitution, mm -hmm. made, personally came and made her contribution, and collectively, the court, the, the prosecution, you know, the defense attorneys, we, we, we got him out. And, he, you know, he Ooh. said freedom, so I, oh. I, I, I always remember that. But again, Ooh. as I said, constitutionally, it's not just the 50 years. It was a state of emergency where you had young men who weren't committing crimes that were detained for 18 months, so, you know, for long periods, not committing crimes, not right. no evidence, not an iota of evidence that could be put before a criminal court to say these persons are criminals. And that's the danger. So they, a lot of them are nameless and faceless, but believe me, a day in prison, I can tell you. <laughs> It's like a thousand years in, in thy sight. And it changes you. And it changes, it changes you. you. It changes you. So I, I must say to you, I'm, we are now, you know, when the lockdowns come and it is almost like post-traumatic stress disorder yeah. to be have to be detained and incarcerated. It's for a good cause. We don't understand COVID yet, but just appreciate that. And then... I'm always fight. But listen, when we understand the Constitution, maybe people will change their minds about questions as to the, the, the fighting for a national treasure's right, the Vibes Cartel, and his case and his co defendants, and, and, and what the Constitution requires for a trial of that magnitude and the, the safeguards within the constitutions, that is important. And so it's before the Privy Council now, so I won't say much on it, but the Privy Council will answer and, and certainly 
clarify the law and position as to how to go about, you know, the breaches in his case. It's a constitutional case. Is it? It is a constitutional case. And, and, and we, are, we should all have an interest, a public interest, in ensuring our rights are protected. Not, not because of who the defendant is. It is that it might be you. That, that, that's all it's, it is. That's, you know, it's, it's that part. It, that's the part. That, that part. Exactly. It might be you. Because the Constitution is designed to protect all of all us. All of us. And when I say all of us, members of the JCF, members of the JDF, if you are a citizen and a son or daughter of this country, you would be surprised the ways in which a public body can violate your constitutional right. By, by simply just want, for instance, you are a female. I'm raising this and I hope it, it, it's a, it, it, it makes the cut. <laughs> Let me say it that way. A female should more than anybody in this country have the right to bear arms. We are a high crime society that is plagued with crime and violence. A, a, a young lady was shot in her home. I, I see her beautiful. It's, it's as if we, 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 we just destroying the beauty of this country, but she was killed this week. If not yesterday, the day before, she was just in her house and she was shot. But appreciating that you need the right to rear arms because if you're not being abused, if you're not being sexually harassed, mm. you're being molested, you're being raped, you're Name being put in, in, in you understand? Name and women, women have a certain amount of independence now, which, which invites violence, you know, because on a, on a, on a, vo on a voice, strong, because on a paycheck heavy nowadays, but you know. But also, it's <laughs> deemed by many insecure men to be emasculating. Exactly. So when they, in they, fact they, it's not, it should not be emasculating for the man, but okay. empowering to see a woman so empowered. All right, so this is why when Pinky and our hair salon and nail store presents herself to NF, um, FLA and says, I need a firearm because I'm a business owner. And they say, what you do? I own my hairdressing parlor. I have four hairdressers working for me and I need to protect my business because her address is Kingston 13 or 12, they said you don't need the gun. But it's to protect your life and liberty. So when they just arbitrarily deny her, she has no conviction, she has nothing, but they just don't like her address. That's a constitutional violation. But it cannot be that every single thing we need, we have to run to the court to get declarations Correct. to say we have this right. Correct. It is our right and it should be afforded to us, all of us. Absolutely. So, so that's, that's, those are the things that um, I live my life daily trying to navigate. So that, oh. so, 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 so that um, women in parliament who are the majority should speak out about, against domestic violence. Absolutely. They shouldn't tolerate it. They shouldn't Absolutely. accept it. They should make statements like, I know what the law says, but my moral compass says otherwise. And the people who put me here, if I don't speak for them, who will? Absolutely. And nobody should fault you for that. That is your role as a, a spokesperson. A leader in the nation. Yes. That is it. Yes. Because nobody can fault me as, as, as a male who say, well, I know my business that. I know me I get liquid stool, come here, man. You understand? Absolutely. You leave it at that. Mm. What do you say to the youngster who feels as though they've made some wrong turns, life has been chaotic, nothing has felt like it's gone right, mm. and they are not able to see this silver lining on the cloud that's covered, currently hovering over them. What do you say to that youngster? All right, so that youngster, it's not that they're not able to see. They are not given the room and the freedom to express the thoughts and ideas. Mm. You know, we live in a society where when you feel something, even as, as a man, you can't even say to your brethren, I'm scared. 
talk truth. That's a, that's a freedom because of expression, you're not you know. To be vulnerable. Right, you, yeah, that's yeah. not for you. Yeah, yeah. So you see, you are restricted. Young people who are finding themselves, um, they are they are restricted. Yeah. They are put into boxes, and 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 characterized and 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 typecast like this is a movie. In in black Hollywood, black actors can only be gangsters or right. or, or gay. And Those black, are the rules. Black women can only be ratchets. ratchets. Yeah, if you're not a hood, you know, if you're not yeah. stripping and you're not yeah. carrying on, you don't get a role. Yeah, you you know you can't be like in this society. The the beauty of this society, our DPP is a female. Yes, majority of our judges are females, yeah. powerful and competent. Yes. Most of them UEKated, but I, I, anyway. But, <laughs> but and, feel and, like and, somebody and, from UEK, you. <laughs> no. That's where I get my liberation, yeah, so I have yeah, to speak yeah. on it. Yeah. And, um, you know, the, these roles aren't, I mean, the best we have at it was Annalise Keaton. Yes. And, and she, was, she was get away with murder. Yeah, so yeah. She, you know, yeah, and, yeah. And, and Olivia Pope. Criminal as, 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 as power. Er, 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 but, right. you know, we, we, we have forgotten that Portia Simpson, who, you know, the Honorable Portia Simpson, was born on my birthday, I must say. She so sure is. Year, you know, 12, 12. She, she, she shattered the glass ceiling yeah. that Hillary Clinton, a white woman, wasn't allowed to do. Oh, I did not draw that parallel. No, that's very, very important because we spend a lot of time saying that she was not bright and she, she, she was this and she was that. But her greatness is will 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 show because forever and forever, forever she will be the when, first as well not only that she is the first and currently the only correct so when it looks good in on paper yes correct and the next achievement um whether miss kamala harris um is accepting of our jamaican roots or not is the greatness that is being a jamaican is always showing on the stage i can speak you, you know it, it kind of is important as to what Marcus Garvey did for Malcolm X and Martin Luther. Yes. What um, Usain Bolt has done, what Bob Marley has done, what, what the greatness of Jamaica. Yeah. So that is what we need to protect, our heritage. It's few of us and we are like gems and pearls in the larger aspect. So when I see a madman and I talk to him, yeah, you can say I'm mad, but I'm hope I realize that that's one of us and he might have the answer to the problems. Absolutely. And, and, and so we yeah. address mental health so that um, we don't have to read the news and trying to ask ourselves, why would a, a, a woman want to drive off of Flatbridge? Damaging. Why would a child say he wants to be a gunman and then the entire society says he needs correction, he needs this? When he's expressing himself and in first world countries, kids, black and white, are at the gun range using guns to be able to make the determination how to be responsible with it. So by the time I'm 18, I'm not in a gang. How to be exposed to things so we know to say no. Way before social media, my parents was very clear on what um, child molestation is. Well, I, mother and father tell you, if male or female touch you, come tell me. So if I'm at school and my teacher touch me, even with a duster because I'm talking too much, this was always my response. Me, I tell my father. Because communication and expression is what is important. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that should never be silenced. Exactly. Never. So, so that is the aspect of it that, 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 that is important for me. I said thank you. I feel like I want to go and study law. <laughs> no, I don't actually. <laughs> actually, do you know, fun and joke aside, do mm -hmm. you know that similarly to what you were sharing, I've often been it's often been said to me that I'm so good at arguing my way out of issues and that problems. That you should do law. <laughs> but I would hope that you, you should take that on. You should why why you look at me I like that? I didn't know you were also a comedian. No man, listen. <laughs> listen. I have students who are 55, like 60, and that's the beauty of the law, you know, there's no expiration. Very true. And some of the senior attorneys are, listen, when you see them, they have everything in their head. Yeah. 
you know, it, their cognitive ability is not lost on them. Yeah. And same for judges, yeah. and, and except for statute that causes some of them to retire. You, you, law is, there's no expiration on it. And so if you take it on, it's welcome. I'm really glad. I'm extremely grateful mm -hmm. that you didn't stop. I'm really grateful that you continued and you pushed the bar. You raised it several notches mm -hmm. and you now execute in what I think is one of the most beautiful aspects of executing the law and it's in the support of the rights of human, human. beings. I think it is absolutely beautiful. It's like the perfect icing on, on the, the cake, cake of yes. your story. It really is. Thank you. It truly is. Yeah. Well done! <laughs> thank you so much. Really and truly. Thank you, Isa. I appreciate you sharing it. Thank you. And thanks for having me.